I wanted to have uh, some somewhat of a legitimate character thing going into Hollywood. I didn't want to be a phony. Yeah. But I never made it to Hollywood because in 1972, Jesus hey, hey. stepped in my way. Hey, hey. And the amazing thing with that, I'd been with Knievel about three years, and I always used to joke with him about this. He hated it. I said, yeah, I was with Knievel, and uh, I found Jesus and departed from evil. <laughs> <laughs> he used to hate that. But, but anyway, that's how that got started. And uh, since 1978, I've been doing it full time as a ministry, and we don't charge for any of our programs. We go into whatever community we can get into. Um, I live in the West. I live in Billings, Montana. So we do a lot of rodeos. And we do fairs and all kind of church parking lots. And we go oh, in and, yeah. and I do the ramp to ramp jump. It's symbolic. You'll, you'll actually see it in the roll-in. But that's what oh. the roll-in's about. I've been doing that for almost 40 oh, years. Oh, well, we want to see this because, man, you know, okay. we want churches and these events to do this. This is it's so very cool. powerful. This is amazing. So we're going to check this out here. This is a little bit about uh, what Gene does uh, even now. Wow. <laughs> Even Check now. this out. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I began to see my life, see the, all the sin I was in, all the things God had done for me. I was confronting sin for the first time in my life. And I'm, I'm there weeping as God is convicting me. And they had an altar call and I went forward. And I just totally gave my life to God. I knew he wanted everything. I knew he wanted just everything that I had. And I said a prayer that morning. I said, Lord, all that I am, all that I'll ever be, wherever I go, whatever I do, I put my life in your hands. Lord Jesus. Thank you for my life. I wanted to go on record today that all that I am, all that I'll ever be, wherever I go, and whatever I do, I now place my life into your hands. I got invited to a youth camp. Uh, you, you know what? You know, I didn't go looking for the Lord. But at 18 years old, he got a hold of me. Look, I think this is fascinating. I, I just wanted to say, just time out before I go back to Gene and just say, this: what an incredible outreach tool. Gene takes Team Jesus, comes in there, sets all that. You can see all the symbolism. You can see the cross. You can see the fire representing the gates of hell. You can see it in leading these hundreds of people to Christ. This is an incredible tool. And I just wanted to just, just step right in for a minute and just say, if you're a pastor, if you're a, a city leader, if, if you put together events, get their information because I think this is a fantastic tool to bring people to Christ. Can we give God praise for this? <laughs> so
So what drives you, Gene, to keep doing this, man? 42 years. When are you going to quit? I'm not. And what drives got, you to do I'll this? I'll tell you, uh, I got it figured out. I'm going to be on the way to the wall when the rapture hits. Come on. And they're going to see me and everything going into the wall and just my leathers <coughs> neatly folded on the bike coming out. Well, let me just tell you, knowing your heart for evangelism, <laughs> I think they'll already be gone too because you're going to have already brought them to Christ. Gene, I am so, as I like to say, impressed with your heart. Uh, because people, you know, one of the things I'm learning is, as Jesus did, j people just need a, a, a connection to they God that makes real. sense to them. Yes. They're not getting the preaching. Yeah. They're not getting coming to the church. Someone's got to go out there and fish with bait you got it. that works. Yes. And, you know, I think of the story of the two guys fishing, and the one guy's catching fish, yeah. and the guy's not, and the next guy's not. And he says, well, what are you using? The guy that's catching me using worms. He asks, what are you using? Donuts. <laughs> he says, why do you use donuts? He said, because I like them. <laughs> and I think churches are fishing with donuts yeah. because we're fishing with what we like. And here you are out there going through fire, jumping over ramps. Why? Because it's bait. And I just want to encourage you, man. Keep I, going, uh, man. I had laid down the motorcycle jumping for a number of years and gone into ministry training. And uh, I was at breakfast one morning, and you said, "What? where did my passion come from? Well, this is the truth. This is what happened. I had the eggs right about here. And the Lord gave me a vision. And I saw myself back in the stunt business mm. jumping for Jesus. Mm. And I thought, mm. nah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and I don't know if you realize this, but back then there was no evangelism. There was no brick breaking. There was no strength team. There was, there was nothing happening on the church parking lot back. Th this was 1978. Oh, sure. And it was in South Florida. Yeah. And the Lord said, I want you to get a crew together and uh, get the bike and put on a jump right in the church parking lot. I said, wow. Jesus, I said, there's no self-respecting pastor in his right mind. Don't <laughs> let me do that on his parking lot. Oh, my you know, goodness. I can see the news. Stunt man kills himself at Advent <laughs> Lutheran Church on Sunday, <laughs> you know. But oh we got a hold God. of a, this, this, actually this Lutheran pastor who really <laughs> didn't know Jesus like the idea, and so <laughs> he had me in. <laughs> really, that's how it happened. You are a kid. I love it. I love it. <laughs> and so uh, that's how we started, and I just felt like my job was to, to stay in shape, read the word, and jump the bike, and, and uh, so I would just share my story I wouldn't necessarily preach. I would just share my story and just tell, kind of tell people about what the Lord had done to me. But I heard his voice. Mm. When the, the morning I came to Jesus, Albie Pearson, who you might remember, uh, was the littlest angel. Um, he knew my dad. Well, he did a, a short little message up in Reno, Nevada, and I got invited to go by girlfriend, so I went. And I had hair down to here. I was 250 pounds, 20-inch neck, benching over 400 pounds. And I just sitting there stuffing myself with the food. And I had this little message. And this little skinny, withdrawn guy gets up and gave a three-minute testimony. And this guy had been on heroin for seven years. Mm. And his story was this. He said, I was asleep in my bed with my wife. And he said, and the Lord Jesus woke me up. Oh, Lord. And he spoke to me. He said, not audibly, but he spoke in my heart. Mm. And he said, if you throw away your heroin, I'll heal you. Jesus. Well, I was, Jesus. I, was, I was raised a Catholic. And so I didn't think Jesus honestly spoke to anybody but priests, really. Yeah. That's, that's kind of where I was sure. at. Maybe a few nuns. You know? <laughs> and so I, I just... <laughs> I, but, but the Holy Ghost come on me. I didn't know what it was, but I just started feeling really solemn. 
and I dropped my head. Albie Pearson got up and spoke. I didn't hear a word he said. I said, Jesus, I wish you'd speak to me. Mm. I want to just speak to me. Yeah. 40 minutes went by, and he spoke to me for 40 minutes in my heart. He showed me my life. He showed me what a jerk I was. Mm. He showed me my sins. And at the end of Albie's message, they had an altar call. Well, I was the token sinner. There's nobody else. All those folks were saved. So I got up, went down. They grabbed a sofa chair. They sat me in it. Four men laid hands on me. Now, I'm, I'm Bible ignorant, okay? I'm an empty page, right? I sit down in this chair. I had this goofy Chinese necklace some pervert had given me and said, it looks good on you, you know? <laughs> and so... Albie says, what's that? He says, I said, I don't know, and I'm crying. He says, do you want that? I said, no. So he ripped it off my neck, and he said, uh, the Lord's going to fill you with the Holy Ghost. Mm. I, got, I got delivered of demons. I got filled with the Holy Spirit. I spoke in other tongues, and I got out oh of that goodness. chair totally oh a new man. Oh. And this, this word, I've... This word has been kind of on me tonight. Yeah. It comes out of Isaiah 50. And I know you know it. It says, who among you that fears the Lord? This is a question for all of us. Come on. Who among you that fears the Lord and obeys the voice of his servant? Yeah. Walks in darkness and has yeah. no light. Well, the answer to that question should be nobody. Yeah. If you fear God and you can obey the voice of his spirit through the man, the woman of God, your brother, your sister, your boss, the sinner, whatever, if you can hear the voice yeah. and obey it, you will not walk in darkness. You'll have light. That's right. Come on. Stay with it, Gene. The next verse, and this is where my heart goes out. Come on. My heart goes out to so many I know there's, the Lord has ordained this program, and I know there's yes. a lot of people watching this that I think this will be a turning point for you because listen to this next scripture. Behold, all of you that kindle a fire, that kindle your own fire, that encompass yourself with your own sparks and walk in the light that you have kindled. This you'll have of my hand, you'll lie down in sorrow. Now I want to ask a question to us. When you go home at night, I, it doesn't matter. You can say, I'm a Christian. I've received the Lord. I go to church. I'm whatever. When you go home at night and you lay down in your bed, if you're alone, you're all by yourself, do you lay down at peace or are you tormented? Come on. Are you troubled? Come on. Because if you are, he's speaking to you. That's right. And I'm going to tell you what, nobody ever walked this walk without the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Yeah. He goes on to say this. Later on in the chapter, later on, he says, you are wearied in the greatness of your own way. My, my. Yet you have not given up. Uh -huh. You've not said there's no hope for me. God wants you to come to the place where you say, you know what? I've tried it all. Yeah. I've done it all. Yeah. It's all failed. I have no peace in my come life. Come on, Gene. I'm failing at everything I do. I give up. Yeah. And if you can come to that place, you are ready come on. to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> come on. Stay at it, Gene. I don't know. It's, there's a scripture out of Romans that says, Know you not that to whomsoever you yield yourself, servants to obey, his you, servants you are. You, you this are. is a principle of life That's that right. can't be broken. When we willfully yield ourselves to the wrong influence, to the wrong people, the wrong way, yes. we're under bondage to that, and the only thing that can set us free is Jesus Christ. That's right. I want it. Come on, I want to just end it with this. I don't know if you've ever heard it taught this way, but I'm going to challenge you to read the first chapter of Acts and read 
Read the commandment of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Come on. He commanded, he said, being assembled together with them, he commanded them to wait and be filled with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> yeah. 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 This is not a suggestion. This is not a by your leave or if your church accepts it. This is not if your pastor says it's okay. This is Jesus' commandment my. to every living, breathing yes. person. And, and the altar call that you saw in my role in, I lead them through this prayer. And I want to say this prayer real Come quick. On, say it. Just say this prayer with me in your home, here in the studio, whatever. Say this prayer with me. Father God. Father God. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. I wanted to go on record tonight. I want to go on record tonight. That all that I am. That all that I am. All that I'll ever be in this life. All that I'll ever be in this wherever life. Wherever I go. Wherever I and go. And whatever I do. Whatever I do. I now commit my life to you. I now commit my life to you. I am bought and paid for by your blood. I am bought and paid for by your blood. My life is no longer my own. My life is no longer my own. Fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. Fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I'm going to tell you, this program's anointed. I want to tell you that God tonight, you know, this is the way I was raised. I was raised, you got saved, filled with the Holy Spirit, and baptized all in the same night. I'm going to tell you, I don't know who you are, but I, I'm going to tell you tonight, God wanted you to do more than just get saved. He wants you to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And I just want to say right now, I want to tell you, Lift those hands right ever, wherever you are, even in this audience. Just lift your hands. Turn them like this, like you're going to receive. Yes. And I want you to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit right now. I don't want you to worry how it I sounds. Like I don't yes, want Jesus. you to think. Hopefully you're by yourself and you don't have to worry about it. But I want you to know that you can't get the Holy Spirit through your head. You got to get it through your heart. Yes. I want you to know that those that come to God must come by the Spirit. Yes. That means yes. it's got to yes. come from your heart. So ready? Get your hands out yes. like that, and here comes the Holy Spirit. Yes. And when I speak these words, I, don't want, I want you to say, Hallelujah. And then don't worry how it sounds. You're going to receive the baptism of yes, the Holy Spirit. Are. are you ready? Receive now the Hala gift Kavarazia. of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, That's Jesus. That's right. Don't worry how it sounds. Just let it come from you. The Bible says it's like a river that comes out of your belly. Yes. Go ahead, right there. Yes, Jesus. It doesn't Thank have to be Lord. loud. It just Lord. needs to be released. Receive the Holy Spirit. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Now you should start feeling the joy. You should start feeling the joy. You should start feeling the joy. The joy of the Lord is now going to rise up in your heart. Come on, give them praise, everybody. It's a miracle night tonight. <laughs> wow. Well, tonight we pulled off the greatest stunt of them all. <laughs> Amen. We took you right into the baptism of the Holy Spirit. If this is not something you're used to or they don't do it at your church, well, you know what? Don't worry about it. You're at home right now. <laughs> and if something happened to you, and you know, I can tell you this. You get on the telephone, you say, I think I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We'll celebrate with you yes, tonight. Yes, we will. I want to say to all of our guests, thank you for coming tonight. Please, you know, if you go on ITBN, you can pull this program on demand. You can tell your friends to watch this on demand at any time. This program's a soul winning program tonight. I believe we saw thousands saved. And I think we yes. saw hundreds receive the baptism yes. of the Holy Spirit. I want to say to Gene Sullivan, Contact these people that you've seen tonight. They can help you. They can minister to your church. They can do a great work from Steve Stealth Miller all the way through to these guests. They can help you. I'm Pastor Phil Muncy. I pastor the Life Church in Irvine, California. I want to encourage you now, get into a good Bible-believing church. It's time 
to take your life to the next level. Go through those gates of hell like yes. Gene Sullivan has done yes. and continues to do. We love you here at TVN. We know that God's best is for you. We celebrate you. God yes. bless you. We're so glad you've been with us. Well, praise the Lord. TVN has a worldwide ministry. We need your love gifts, large or small, to help keep the gospel of Jesus Christ going around the world. So right today, praise the Lord, P.O. Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711. Or in Canada, right, TVN, P.O. Box 768, Station B, Ottawa, Ontario, K1P, 5P8. If you haven't asked Christ in your life, call a prayer partner now and pray to receive Jesus as Savior and Lord. Now until next time, remember to praise the Lord. This program has been brought to you through the prayers and contributions of our faithful partners throughout North America and the world. Imagine, imagine a place where you can see the Bible come to life. From the historic land of Israel, through the life of Jesus, to the glory of heaven. Imagine yourself at the Holy Land Experience in Orlando, Florida. Imagine ancient Israel through the wilderness tabernacle, the streets of Jerusalem, and the great temple. Imagine living in the days of David and Bathsheba, one of the Old Testament prophets, or the Apostle Paul. Imagine seeing the transforming power of Jesus come to life in those you've only read about. Imagine being an eyewitness to the life of Jesus his miracles, his love, his sacrifice, and his final victory. Imagine being in the upper room for communion, then walking through historic and peaceful gardens, beautiful gardens that encourage contemplation and prayer. Imagine the journey of God's word through the ages, from tablets to scrolls to the printing press. Imagine the life and work of angels yesterday and today. Imagine being in the ark or the belly of a whale, crossing the Red Sea, or walking on the water with Jesus. Imagine, imagine this. Yes. And then see it at the Holy Land Experience in Orlando, Florida. Plus, miracle moments. The Jesus Boat, special guest speakers and musicians, and the Crystal Living Waters. In addition to all of this, take a walk through the brand new Christus Gardens. You'll be amazed by the lifelike wax sculptures portraying the biblical accounts in the life of Jesus. Can you imagine it? Imagine it. Then live it. Imagine yourself at TBN's Holy Land Experience in Orlando, Florida.